Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Today we're going to be posing the question, are password managers safe to use? Well, if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So first of all, what is a password manager? Well, of course, long gone are the days where we can, you know, kind of have one password, you know, whatever, chocolate bar or something like that, big C, big B, you know, and whatever website you use, Gmail, Microsoft, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, whatever, your know, Facebook, you know, whatever you're using, you just use the same email address and the same uh, password. Please tell me you're not doing that. You can't do that because uh, the technology that exists today in terms of computer speed and other things, that would be a very easy password to crack and they could get into your account. They can do identity theft, they get into your banking, all kinds of horrible things can happen. So as a result of that, you need to use a different password for every site. Now, of course, you can't use Facebook for Facebook, Twitter for Twitter, you know, Google for, for you know, Gmail. You can't do that either. So the best thing is you have to have a random password generated for each website. So, you know, that might be one exclamation mark dot Z A B nine seven hash three two Q D D four, you know, something like that. Of course, it's impossible to uh, remember. So we start to use password managers applications that can save our passwords and when we go to log into a site when we go to use something it knows the password that we had already created for that website now there are basically three different types of password manager and they kind of fit into these br broad categories one of course you can have a program that just stores your passwords locally on your pc and the only way to get a copy of those passwords that you've stored would be to physically get hold of your pc which of course isn't impossible if you've got a laptop and you kind of you know you use a laptop you've got a, a program that you keep all your passwords in someone steals your laptop there is the possibility that they could get hold of all those passwords now you'd expect that program itself to have a password which you use to get into it and also you'd expect it to use some kind of encryption so that even if someone did get hold of your laptop, they wouldn't be able to just see all of the passwords there kind of in plain text. The second type of password manager is something that's built into your browser, whether that's Firefox or Google Chrome or whatever it is that you're using. The, the, the browser itself says, oh, okay, I can save that password for you. And it saves the password locally. But now here's a difference. It actually is able to offer a synchronization service. So if you have a desktop and a laptop or you have a desktop and a phone, for example, then when you start up your browser of choice in the desktop, then it's automatically saved the passwords that you generated on your phone and uh, vice versa. So there's a synchronization that's going on. And for that to happen, of course, it has to upload the data somewhere into the cloud. And this is where remote hacking now becomes more of a uh, possibility because your data has left your PC, left your phone, and it's gone up to someone else's server. And we'll come back to that in a minute. And the third type is a dedicated password manager that has cloud synchronization built into it. And there are many, many different ones. LastPass and one password being some of the popular ones. So here's a question for you. Do you have a case on your smartphone? If you do, is it thick and bulky? I'd like to recommend to you Phoenix smartphone cases. They're super slim and you'll find a link to them in the description below. It's an affiliate link. If you buy through that, you help out this channel. Of course, we have to understand that all cloud services are vulnerable in this way, whether it's your email, whether it's your online banking, whether it's the shopping that you do, whether it's your local uh, taxidermy club or scuba diving club or whatever it is that you do. The moment you've shared some details and they are stored somewhere in the cloud, there is the possibility that data can be stolen. Now, of course, what we hope and what we trust when we sign up to things like Google or to Microsoft or to Twitter, it, what we hoped was that there would be services and people and security built in so that the stuff our usernames and passwords and addresses and social security IDs and all that kind of stuff can't get stolen. Now, of course, history now in the last five years is just littered with examples of very big names of companies that have suffered what they call security breaches or data breaches. That means that somehow a hacker has found a way and it's never the same way. It's always something different. It's always something unique, always something uh, that is that a weakness in that particular site that wouldn't apply to another site. They find a way to get in there and some we're on the, in their services. There's a huge database with a million, you know, 10 million uh, names and addresses and emails and all that kind of stuff there. And basically they download it, then they take that information and then they try to sell it 
on to uh, you know to spammers and to malware writers and to and all that kind of stuff. Now, unfortunately, history has shown us that password managers are not immune to these types of attacks, and there have been cases when lots and lots of information has been stolen, not only just your email address and your name, but now also all the passwords to all of your social media, to all of your shopping, to all of your emails, to all of everything you've ever signed up to, to your tax, to your bank, all of that stuff that you've saved in there is now available to these hackers. Now, there is some good news uh, about this, and that is that most serious companies, of course, always store this data encrypted. They don't just have a database where it says, you know, Gary Sims and then in my Twitter account and then, you know, chocolate bar as my password. And they just, the hackers just download it and go, great, now we've got all of Gary's password. They actually employ it encryption. And that encryption should and mainly does use a concept called zero knowledge, which basically means that even the company itself whoever it is, whatever online service it is, whatever password manager it is, they can't even read your password because it's encrypted using a key that only you know. And that's related, of course, to your master key that you've used to log into the website, basically, or that you've set up as part of the service. Now, if that's the case, that is good news because that means that even though they might have, you know, 200 of my passwords, they're all encrypted with very strong encryption. The, the weakness of that is, is if you've used a bad password for that master key. So if you again put chocolate bar in as your uh, password for your master password for the key, then when that gets encrypted, of course, it's, uh, you know, they get instantly access to all of your all of your data. Now, there are other steps that are involved about changing your password, running it through some algorithms to so it's not instantly clear that chocolate bar, you know, is the password that you've used. But it's really important that you've got strong passwords, even for things like password managers. So the lock to your lockbox, you know, the, the combination to your safe that's got all your passwords in it has to be itself very, very strong. And it's best if that is, again, some kind of random generated uh, number, not just, you know, you know, chocolate or one, two, three, four, five, six or, or something like that. Just like to remind you that you can follow me on social media. All the handles are here on the screen. And I also have a monthly newsletter that covers everything I'm doing here on uh, Gary Explains and also everything I'm doing over at Android Authority. If you'd like to get that newsletter, go to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address, no spam, but you will get that newsletter. And another thing that's really, 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 really important is that you use two-factor authentication. Now, what does that mean? Two factor means you need to do two things to get into your account. So one of the factors is the password that you type in. And that's probably been remembered by, you know, your password manager. So it just comes in, you just go in automatically. But once you go past the password step, you need a second step. And that second step is something that again, wants to verify who you are that's not by a password. And there are a couple of uh, you know, di different systems who sometimes for some online services, they might send you a text message uh, to your phone and you have to type in a code. OK, and that code is unique and changes all the time. So unless the hackers have your password and they've managed to hijack your phone somehow using some kind of malware, they can't get both uh, factors, though that is possible. But in more extreme uh, cases, maybe they send you an email. Uh, and you have to click on a link to confirm that you're the person that's logging in. Again, that is okay, unless the hackers have got into your email account, then of course they can you know, bypass that one. And another one is to use, let's say, some kind of app on your phone. Microsoft and Google both have authenticator apps that generate numbers that change every 30 seconds, every minute, whatever, and you have to type in that number, and the website has, they're synced up in terms of time code, and they have to type in that number, and they have to match up. And that's pretty secure, because they can't get access to your phone uh, and see what's on your screen. So that's pretty good. And of course, another one is to use uh, some kind of FIDO key. And I've got several videos about those here on this channel. So you have to have, you know, it's a USB key or it's a Bluetooth key. You have to physically have it in your hand to authenticate to make sure that you can proceed. So even if you are using a password manager, even if you're happy with the security that, that password service provides, you really should also use two uh, factor authentication.
And one final tip is you should use a service that checks these data breaches, checks these big databases that have been uploaded onto the internet and checks whether your username or password is in there so that you know that you should change your password, enable two-factor authentication for whichever sites it is that have been attacked. Now, sometimes that's built into the password manager itself. You can There are websites that can do it and I'll leave a link to one in the description below. Uh, you can probably get extensions for your browser and so on but you should basically make sure that you're checking that so that if suddenly you know a thing that you are using and you didn't even know that the uh, your local scuba diving club you know got uh, got hacked then you you get access to that and you say oh, I better go away and change my password okay so there you have it so please do tell me in the comments below do you use a password manager and which password manager would you recommend to other viewers of my videos my name is Gary Sims this is is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.